Hi, this is Jeff Challen. In this screencast, we're going to continue talking about virtualization and actually start using it. So we're going to create a virtual machine, install Linux in it, and start uh, messing around with it and showing you how much fun this can be. So I'm going to just get right started here. We'll have a little bit of time to talk, and I'll have a little bit of time to you know talk about virtualization a little more in a second because there are some pauses during the installation. So. Let's open a virtual box, which we uh, played around with a little bit last time. And then let's go over here uh, and start the process creating a new virtual machine. So I click this new button. And now I have some choices to make that are reminiscent of the kinds of choices I would make when I actually configure a real physical computer. Things like how much memory do I want in it? How large of a hard drive do I want? How many processors are gonna, is it going to use? Things like this. So I'm going to call this Lubuntu, and you'll see in a minute. You can call it whatever you want. Um, if you don't use a name that VirtualBox can guess, then you, know, you want to choose the uh, describe the guest operating system that you're about to install. In this case, we're going to install a 64-bit version of Linux. So we're doing great here. Um, now, here's one of our first choices. So how much memory do I want this to use? Now, here's the cool thing about virtualization. I can actually choose lots of different values for this, and I can change the value whenever I want. You'll notice here that I can't choose anything larger than 8 gigabytes, and that's because my laptop only has 8 gigabytes worth of storage. So I can't give it more than my laptop has locally, but let's give it a reasonable amount, like 2 gigabytes here. You can choose whatever you want. Now it's going to ask me about the hard drive I want to use. In contrast, the hard drive is actually a bit of a pain in the butt to change later if you want to make it bigger. It's possible, but it requires some futzing. So let's, um, you know, we're not going to use this virtual machine for very long. Um, let's choose a little bit of a larger value, maybe 16 gigabytes. Uh, I've got plenty of space on my computer, and now I'm done. So I'm going to get this guy. Uh, rockin' with an installation, and then we'll chat a little bit about what's going on. So once you've created your virtual machine, double-clicking on it will start it. Now, essentially what I'm doing is I'm starting up a virtual computer. And this virtual computer is brand new, right out of the box. No one has ever installed an operating system on it. And so VirtualBox is smart enough to notice that and say, hey, you need to give this computer something to do. Um, so in this case, what I'm going to do, and I've already downloaded this, is I'm going to use the lightweight um, version of Linux called Lubuntu. So Lubuntu is a lightweight version of the popular Ubuntu operating system. Um, I've already downloaded the 1604.3 LTS uh, desktop 64-bit version. That's about 800 megabytes. So it would be great if you did this before you came to lab so that uh, we didn't completely saturate the network. So I've got it sitting right here, uh, all ready to go. I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to hit Start. Now what you're starting to see here is essentially exactly what you would see if you were sitting in front of a physical computer that was booting up um, from this CD. That file that I just provided is a CD image. It contains the exact contents of a CD. So this is the virtual machine equivalent of having a brand new computer, opening the CD-ROM drive, putting in an installation disk, and, and starting up. I don't know if that's an experience that anybody your age still remembers, but certainly that's something that I did a few times. We'll choose English as our installation language, and then we are going to choose Install Lubuntu. You can run it without installing, but because we have a virtual machine here, let's install it on our virtual machine. So I choose Install, and this is starting up an installation process where the uh, Lubuntu uh, Linux uh, installation is going to be installed onto the virtual machine that we've that we've created. So one of the things that's very interesting about virtualization is I can reconfigure this virtual machine at will. So if I power this down, I'm going to get rid of you, um, I can actually add more memory, I can add more processors, I can change the amount of disk space, although again that's a little bit um, tricky. Um, so walk through the process of completing the installation. I'm going to download some updates. Now here's a point where we see that things are a little bit interesting. So this says this computer currently has no detected operating systems, which is strange because my computer is running Mac OS. So it is running an operating system. So why has the installation detected that there's no detected operating systems? That's because I'm running in this virtual machine. So this gives me some sense of how completely isolated this environment is from the rest of my system. So I'm going to say erase disk and install Lubuntu. Uh, it's going to warn me about making these changes because they are permanent. I hit continue. 
and it's going to continue working. It's detected my time zone. I'm going to um, configure my keyboard. I know I'm a little bit weird. You don't don't do that if you don't know what you're doing. Um, I've been using that keyboard layout for a long time. Um, you know, it, it doesn't. You know, is it okay to use a weak password on your virtual machine? Probably. I mean, who cares? Um, no one is. You know, really ever going to you know, uh, be able to access this machine. It's completely private. Um, and so uh, having a weak password for it is, is not that big of a deal. Okay, so now essentially what this is doing is the installation process. So that virtual machine that I created is now being configured to run Lubuntu. And let me show you around a little bit. So I'm going to open up a terminal here um, and go into, I'm trying to remember where these things go. Aha, here we go. VirtualBox VMs. Um, so remember when we created that virtual disk? So here is this virtual disk, um, and you can see that it already is 2.4 gigabytes. So what appears as a disk to the virtual machine is actually a file on the host machine. Um, also, if I run this top command, I can see that um, the virtual box VM command is consuming an enormous amount of CPU. In fact, it's almost using all of the CPU cycles on one of my CPU cores. Um, and that's because I've configured it to allow it to use one of the cores on my system. The You can see happily out of the box, um, my virtual machine has access to the network. So it's able to do things like download new software, update itself, things like that. Um, and that's sort of what it's doing right now. Um, the most important thing to understand about a virtual machine is that it is completely isolated from the rest of your system. So nothing that you do wrong inside this virtual machine can affect the rest of your computer. And so this is a great learning environment when you're trying to, for example, learn the command line or learn how to use Linux. So I install this, and if I mess something up, I can delete the virtual machine, reinstall it from scratch, and start over and, and I won't have affected my primary computing environment at all. So, you know, there are, if you use Mac OS, you can launch a terminal just whenever you want to and now I'm inside my Mac. But if I make a mistake here, I'm actually could potentially break my computer. There's plenty of things I can do using the terminal application using Mac OS that will render my computer completely inoperable. Um, and so if I'm not that familiar with that environment, Maybe I just want to use a virtual machine so I don't make sure that my mistakes won't leave me with a non-functional laptop. All right, so the installation has succeeded, um, and now my new virtual machine is ready to go. So you don't actually have to remove the installation medium. Um, you know, it thinks it's a real machine, but it's not. You can just hit return, and then it's going to reboot. And so now what's happening is I'm actually booting for the first time into this brand new virtual machine. So here's the login prompt. I'm going to use the password that I configured before to log in. And now here I am. So let me maximize this. And we will start poking around. Now, now when you originally run um, Lubuntu for the first time, you'll see that the, you know, for example, it doesn't scale the display properly. And this is something that you can fix by installing some new uh, software inside your virtual machine. I'm not going to do that right now. Instead, I'm just going to kind of show you around a little bit. So the tool that we're um, going to mess around with today is, is the command line. So in order to launch a command line terminal in Lubuntu, I go to what's the equivalent of the start menu, and then I choose system tools and LX terminal, and then I can maximize this. And now I'm running inside a Linux environment. So for example, if I run ls, this shows me all the files in my current directory. If I run pwd, this shows me the current directory I'm in. I'm in home challenge. If I go up one directory by doing cd dot dot, now I'm in the, my home directory. And there's only one subdirectory of that. That's the subdirectory for my user. If I go up one more directory, I'm in the root directory of the entire system, and now you can begin to see the directory hierarchy that's established by Linux. So this is how to get into your um, 
very own Lubuntu Linux virtual machine. Now, when you're done using this, um, you don't want to leave this around because it does consume a fair amount of system resources, but it's very, very easy to shut down. So all I do is close the window. It's going to ask me, I can power off the machine at this point if I want to, but I can also just save the machine state, which is sort of the equivalent of putting it to sleep. So this takes a few seconds, and when it's done, uh, that virtual machine is no longer running. Now, there's a fair number of settings that are configurable here uh, when the machine is shut down. So, for example, if I've decided that my system is running a little slow, I might go to the System tab in the Preferences, choose Processor, and, oh, yeah, actually, actually I have to shut the thing down entirely. So if this was shut down, sorry, it's not shut down right now, it's just sleeping. Um, I would be able to go here, go to system, and have it use more than one processor, for example. So anytime I shut the system down before I reboot it, I can make a bunch of changes to the virtual machine configuration. And you can imagine how useful this is when I'm trying to run a server farm that's providing computing services to a bunch of different uh, clients. All right, so that's an introduction to virtualization. Um, have fun at the command line, and uh, I hope you enjoy the lab.